Good day. Welcome back to the second lesson on rules of probability. I want to discuss with you what we call special events. So within probability, at the moment, we are working with two events. The general rule that we discussed in the previous episode, that is true for any two events. Doesn't matter if they are special or not. And I will clear the whole thing about why we call them special. And this, just remember that this general rule is always true. Even within special events, that is true. There are three of them that I would like to discuss. I'm first going to go over the rules first so that it is clear what they are all about. And then we will look at a few examples so that you can see how to use them. The first rule of these special events is called mutually exclusive events. That is when two events are mutually exclusive. Now, what does that mean? Like I said here, yeah, if two events A and B are mutually exclusive, they have no intersection. So I just would like to make a quick drawing for you so that you can see in terms of a Venn diagram how this will look like. So if I draw a Venn diagram, and always remember that is your sample space S, and I have two events A and B, but please take note, no intersection. So that means the two events have nothing in common. There's not a both part. So this is event A, that is event B. Now, as you can see, the moment that is missing, that we these two events have nothing in common, and that is what we said over here. We say that the probability of that A and B will happen, that that probability is zero. So what will now happen to our general rule? So if I say the P of A or B is equal to the P of A, plus the P of B, minus the P of A and B. That was a little bit terrible. So let me just write it more neat, and that is probability of A and B. And now, whenever the questions say the two events are mutually exclusive, we know that that AND part will be zero. So whatever they ask us now, so you can already see what's going to happen, they're going to tell you now that the two events are mutually exclusive. They were going to give you maybe the probability of A as well as the probability of B, and they can ask you for OR. But that means that AND was given to you by the fact that they are mutually exclusive. I'm sure this rule makes perfect sense. Let's look at the second one of these special events. And this is one which we call exhaustive events. Now, what does that mean? I say here that two events, A and B, are exhaustive if the union is equal to the sample space. Now, what does that mean, that the union is equal to the sample space? So let's have a look at a drawing to illustrate this. So I'm going to draw a Venn diagram again. That is my sample space. Now, please take note, this little definition of exhaustive events say that the union is equal to the sample space. It's got nothing to do with the AND. So it means these two events may have an AND, A and B, nothing, no problem with the AND, but whenever we find the OR, that is now everything inside, that must be the same as the sample space. So it means nothing, no outcomes 
and be outside. So these two events exhaust the whole sample space. All the outcomes are within events A and B or in both. And that is now, when that happens, we can now say that the probability of A or B is equal to 1. Because always remember that the probability of the sample space is always 1. And if the probability of the OR is 1, that means it's equal to the sample space. That means the two events are exhaustive. Now you may wonder why do we need this? And that is will be very clear after we look at the third one. This one is called complementary events. Now it's quite easy to understand what does it mean if we discussed the previous two, and we're going to look at the previous two again. So events are, we call them complementary when, if both happens, that means they are mutually exclusive as well as exhaustive. And you can see why this is important to us. So we want to know when two events are complementary or if the question say to you the two events are complementary, then you can say immediately that they are mutually exclusive. And for mutually exclusive, you know that the AND, like we just said before, that the AND is zero. And for exhaustive, it means the OR is equal to one. And I think you can see where this is coming from. So for mutually exclusive, the AND is zero. For exhaustive, the probability of A or B is equal to one because it must be the same as the sample space. Now, how are we going to use this? So let's write down, let's just write down the general rule again. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Now it is given to us that the two events are complementary. So that means the OR is 1. P of A, we're going to leave it. And P of B stays there. And the AND, the AND that is mutually exclusive, is 0. So as you can see now, we now get the P of A plus the P of B, the probability of A, probability of B, is equal to 1. Now this is only true if two events are complementary. Now, for two complementary events, please remember what we said on the previous two uh, rules. If two events are complementary, it means there's no AND, there's no intersection, so this is A and that is B. And there's nothing outside. So if I just select numbers randomly and I say 1, 2 and 3 is here, 4, 5 and 6, whatever they represent, that is my sample space. Nothing outside, there's no intersection, it means A and B are complementary. Now, something very important to understand. I now want to bring in another term which we refer to as not. So I'm asking you now, what is not A? What does it represent? Now, for complementary events, not A is equal to, that means you, you, you take, you remove A, so what will be left? Remember, there's nothing outside. B will be left. And for the same, we can also say what is not B. And as you can see, that of course will be A. Now, the reason why we want to know this is we can now apply this not A equal to B within this rule so that we can find a rule in terms of A. 
So we're now going to say that the P of A plus the P of B, which you please remember, we said B is the same as not A, and that will be equal to 1. And if we do manipulation here, the P of not A is equal to 1 minus the P of A. And this is very important for us to know because in many problems, you will find that the question is to find the probability that some event will not take place. And it's then difficult to work it out. And then we work out what is the probability it will happen. And we subtract that answer from one and that gives us the probability that it will not happen. So let's now move to our first example to see how we're going to use these special events. Let's read. Two mutually exclusive events. So please take note, the moment that is given to you, we can immediately write down something. And I always suggest that don't just read over it, please make sure that you remember what it means. Mutually exclusive events, A and B, means the AND is zero. That is what mutually exclusive events mean. There is no intersection. And then it given to us is the probability of A as 0, 0,3 and the probability of, and now can you see, I brought in the not B here, is 0, 0,4. I will come back to that just now. And now the question is to find or determine the probability of A or B. So I'm pretty sure you can already see that we're going to use that general rule again of probability because we want or, we know and, and we know what the probability of A is, and we know the probability of not B. So let's just write down our general rule. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Now, or is what they want. That was the question. We want to find or. Do we know the P of A? Yes, indeed. 0, 0,3. Plus, do we know the probability of B? And I want to say almost. Now, Think of that rule that we just spoke about. That rule said that the probability of not B is equal to 1 minus the probability of B. Or we can say the probability of B is 1 minus the probability of not B. And you can see that not B, probability of not B was given to us. So that means we can say 1 minus 0, 0,4, which is 0, 0,6. And that is the probability of B. So quite easy to find the probability of B if the probability of not B is given to us. So that is 0, 0,6. And then subtract the probability of A and B. And you still remember why this is 0? because the two events are mutually exclusive. And that means we can now finish this question easily. Right, 0, 0,3 plus 0, 0,6 minus 0 is 0, 0,9. So that is our answer to this question. Let's look at another example. Now given to you is Two exhaustive events, X and Y, are such that the P of X is 0, 0,9, the P of X and Y is equal to 0, 0,7, determine the P of Y, the probability of, of event Y. Now, let's just quickly write down what is given to us. Probability of X is given, 0, 0,9, probability of X and to y, you can see now, and is given to us. 
when we tend to think they're going to ask us for or, they didn't ask for or, they ask for the probability of why. So that means or is given to us. And of course, or is given to you because of the fact that the two events are exhaustive. So please remember again, what do we know about exhaustive events? The probability of X or Y is equal to one. So the probability of X or Y was matter of fact given to us by the fact that the two events are exhaustive. So you can now see how we use these rules to solve probability questions. So let's just write down our general rule again. Probability of X or Y is equal to the probability of X plus the probability of Y minus the probability of X and Y. So as you now can see, we know what OR is. We know what AND is. We also know what the probability of X is and probability of Y, as you remember, that was the question. So let's just substitute and then we can manipulate and solve the probability of Y. Probability of X or Y, you all agree that that is one for the reason that the two events are exhaustive. Probability of X, 0, 0,9 plus probability of Y, that is what we would like to find. Subtract the probability of X and Y, which is 0, 0,7. So now, what we can do, this 0, 0,9 minus the 0, 0,7, we can first simplify that. And I hope you agree with 0, 0,2 plus the probability of Y. So now, quite easy to find the probability of Y, because that will be equal to 1 minus 0, 0,2. Remember, that now goes to the other side. And that means the probability of Y is 0, 0,8. I hope by doing this, you, it was easy for you to see how we use these rules and that it's very important for you to remember these rules of probability.